Hello everyone, welcome back. My name is Greg Furman and this is the Vantage Point AI Market Outlook for the week of June the 19th, 2023. Now to get started this week, we'll look at the broader markets. First, this, first of all, looking at the SPY, see where the equity markets are going. Now the bulk of these gains, as we can see, the S&P 500, the SPYs bottomed out at or around October the 13th, 20, 2022. And then we've seen about a 27% rise. So we can see the bulk of these gains are coming from actually in October 2022. Now, if we look at it going into the calendar year <clears throat> 2023, we've also done quite well there for the most part. But when we can see where we've ended up on Friday, after a relatively busy week, we can assess here in 2023, we're up about 14%. So again, the bulk of those gains, we can identify where they're coming from, but it's very important to use accurate anchor points in your analysis, not rolling performance, because it's often a lagging indicator that basically tells us something that happened a considerable period ago. If we look at 2022 with the Fed rate and out, uh, rate hikes, unprecedented rate hikes, which of course we're not getting in 2023, a somewhat confused Fed. But when we look at this right now, we can see that the, the indicators and vantage point on the spies are starting to roll back down. We're, we're not showing a lot of momentum in here. So once again, getting that accurate, accurate, uh, anchor point in our delivery is very important. So our T cross long coming in at 429.32, but our yearly opening price 384 still in a strong uptrend. Uh, 418, that's the level we want to watch with the T cross long. That's where the bulk of our supports are coming. Now, again, when we cross-reference the SPIs to the S&P 500, we can basically see something very, very similar here. But again, we've had a, a larger move. But if we come back to get an accurate look at where this activity has come from, we can see it's on the exact same date on the S&P. So when we measure that point going back from October, then we get a, a very strong idea of where uh, these, where the bulk of these gains have really come from. So again, when I look at the S&P 500, 27 point, approximately 27% were up from that October low. But again, when we look at these numbers, it's important to have that accurate anchor point because at the same time we bottomed out on the SPIs and the S&P 500, the dollar was topping out. So again, when we cross-reference the dollar index to this, we can see the exact same thing is we get into this uh, October, November area, then uh, uh, largely the the dollar index had stopped making any gains. So that direct intermarket coral inverse Intermarket correlation is very, very important to understand. When they're buying dollars, we haven't actually made a new high in the dollar since October. We've had some retracement points. But again, right now, if we look at next week for the dollar trading, we're basically running in a channel. So if we look at this particular channel, we can, we can identify that so we know where our breakout points are. So right now, if I take this from a, a approximately a six month period, we can see the lower end of this channel would be our initial target here, the low point of 10103. But remember guys, this is not a trending move up or down. We've been channeling like this all year. You can see that back in February during a, a period of known dollar strength, that seasonality, we we bought them out there coming in about 100.82. So 100.82 is approximately our lowest point of the year or the bottom end of this particular channel. The top end of this channel, that's coming in at the high of about 105.88. You remember back in uh, back in March of this year where I had warned about continuing to buy dollars up here because the main strength in the dollar was coming from that seasonal. And it, even though most of your pundits were saying to sell equities in March, we were actually buying the equities back then because we're not looking at that rolling performance methodology. We're looking at the actual anchor point from October the 13th warning us that buying dollars up here would be very dangerous. So for next week, 
we would use the lower end of this channel as a potential target down around 100 between 100.82 and 101.02 is our support levels down here we would need a sustained break of that level to trigger a trend a larger trending move but for now guys we remain locked in this channel the dollar uh, again much is what we had discussed again just a few weeks ago with this dollar cycle the dollar is strong at the beginning of the month so we would look for the tall the dollar to likely turn back up at the beginning of july so a little bit more downside and we would look to, to hold within inside this particular channel now if we look at gold contracts here gold starting to to show a little bit momentum to the upside, but not a lot here. We're looking for that pr predicted RSI 59.6 to break above 60, our predicted differences to start moving up so we can build some momentum here. Now it should, uh, we should see some gold strength between now and the first week of July, but remember we've got that period, uh, the last period of the summer of known dollar strength, strength usually at the end of, of June or the first into the first week Week of July so keep an eye on that but our T cross long 1961 we need a break of that level if we can start moving higher which is the likely outcome going into next week depending if we get any more uh, rhetoric coming out of the Fed now when we look at light sweet crude oil uh, once again we would be getting very very close here guys to the end of the seasonal pattern in oil usually that's around about the first second week of July so probably a little bit more upside on oil but uh, after that we we want to be very very cautious with longs uh, we remain negative on the year with oil 8073 is our yearly opening price but in the month of June you can see we're actually doing pretty good the monthly opening price 6770 keep a very close eye on that and for next week our main support is our T-cross long at 7101. We're closing the week 7193. We would look to hold above that level, but more specifically, we want to hold above that very important monthly opening price at 6770. Now, when we look at Bitcoin, Bitcoin's starting to make a bit of a move here. Uh, we work on this one in the Vantage Point Live Training Room. One of the stocks that I really do like that Vantage Point's now forecasting for is HUT8 Mining or HUT8Mining.to, uh, uh, the Canadian version of that stock. But it's a blockchain stock uh, currently running around $3 a share, but also having a fantastic year. Now, Bitcoin, uh, the seasonal pattern in Bitcoin, I, in my respectful opinion, we're about three to four weeks away for Bitcoin to start its move up from a, seas a seasonal standpoint. But right now we, we remain bullish here. We're pressuring the upside, but the monthly opening price 27,115, this is the level we need to start pushing above, but we remain firmly positive on the year. Somewhat comical when we look at the commentary earlier in the year saying Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin's a scam, don't buy Bitcoin. Uh, I've never been in that camp, guys. Uh, Bitcoin is done extremely well over the last 10 years. Yes, it had a terrible year last year. But I think what some of the pundits fail to mention is that whenever Bitcoin has been down 50% on the year, it's then in turn rallied the next two or three years of 50 to 80%. So again, this year we're already currently up about 58%. Uh, and again, the the hut mining uh, hut eight mining stock is up even more than that. So once again, we look for that spin-off methodology of anything related to Bitcoin to rise when Bitcoin does. So right now, again, we'll keep a very close eye on this, but we need to push. I would like to see this uh, Bitcoin getting moving, but I think we still have a little bit more downside before we start moving towards that seasonal next month. Now, as we come into some of our main Forex pairs for next week, Euro US is at the top of the list, rather a hawkish uh, ECB, but I would argue that the, even though the Fed paused, he was somewhat hawkish also. He's making it very clear, higher for longer. They're likely not done hiking yet. There's more to come. So uh, we'll continue to watch this uh, this movie. But right now, I think the euro 
in my respectful opinion, somewhat overextended here. Uh, and the, the neural index strength, the slope of this, is telling me we're, we're starting to lose momentum here. Uh, the predicted difference is definitely uh, they're overextended, but they can still move higher. The predicted RSI, 93.6. So again, our next verified resistance level high, that's coming at about 110.91. I think it's uh, inevitable that we likely get back up towards that level, but we, we also need to, again, uh, remember, we're, when we look at this from a six month standpoint, the, the euro has fared uh, well, but again, we, whenever we make these a series of new highs, if we look at the high going back into February, then once we got near this, we did make new highs in the euro, which is definitely bullish. Uh, but again, each time we've made these new, new highs, we've subsequently moved lower. So again, the euro should hold most of its gains uh, at least until the end of the month. But the further we move away from the T-cross long at 108.06, the more likely it is we're going to retrace to it. So we want to watch these reversal indicators very, very closely to make sure we don't get caught long here. Because again, in my respectful opinion only, as confused as this Fed is, I don't think he's done with the markets <laughs> uh, just yet. Now, the U.S. Swiss franc, uh, we do have the Swiss National Bank rate announcement next week, so that's likely going to be still bullish for the Swiss franc. We, it, this pair really does show the pre depreciation of the U.S. dollar against the, this particular currency. Right now, uh, again, we remain pretty much locked in a, a very similar uh, channel that we see with the other one. But this one's far more pronounced, and uh, the Swiss franc also making gains against the euro and a number of other currencies. So uh, that flight to safety, it just seems that the Swiss franc wins either way. Now, if they keep hiking and they hike this coming week, uh, again, that will be we'll see a fuller, uh, further bullish Swiss franc. But be careful because we could have different. Uh, some different rhetoric out here. We've got a reverse check mark. Uh, we've seen this before, and these are, that I've done and commented on this in these weekly outlooks. That reverse check mark often points to a pending reversal coming. So, and a reversal in this case is simply a retracement back to the T cross long. 90.12, that's the area to watch for. Um, I think we have further downside next week on this pair as the dollar is not likely to get much relief anytime, uh, anytime soon. Now, for the British pound, the British pound, we also, I believe, have the Bank of England next week. But I will warn everybody, too, you've got a holiday in the U.S. Uh, on Monday, so we really don't want to be looking at the markets on Monday, and we want to shift that focus over to Tuesday and Wednesday. This is where we'll see real volume coming back into the market, and then we'll recheck our indicators uh, after the update on Monday and Tuesday night. And then on Wednesday, we'll start to get into a true price. So be patient this coming week. And always remember, in a holiday short week, you're going to see volatility. But right now, the British pound, US dollar, grossly, uh, in my opinion, overextended from the vantage point long predicted at 126.27. The T-cross long at 125.59. So we want to watch our reversal indicators for that corrective move lower. I don't think we're going to see a new uh, trend of the downside. The British pound has been bullish the bulk of the year, 12097. We hold above that. When we look at this from a six month perspective, you can see we had some volatility at the early part, but the pound's been doing quite well since March here. Even though the dollar has done fairly well at points, the British pound has outperformed it. And the British pound, I will point out, has been positive for the bulk of the calendar year where the US dollar index is, has predominantly been negative uh, for the better part of the year. Now, the interest rate differentials continue to favor the carry trade. Uh, I'm so shocked again to hear that the yen is back up at these levels, but you can see this past week, the market uses the vantage point T cross long. I personally use it as a pivot point and say, okay, the T cross long at this particular case is 139.29, a long while above that. I break down below this, then I'm going to retrace deeper. But you can see the market pressured the vantage point predicted moving average and was unsuccessful breaking through. 
Ultimately, it used the T-cross long on Friday as a springboard to extend higher. But again, uh, in my respectful opinion only, uh, any type of risk-off scenario would favor the yen, even with the interest rates here. But for now, we we just be I, I would caution everybody is what is the easiest way for me to say it, that we need to stay above 14093, this this newly formed verified resistance high, if this is going to extend higher. But either way, I believe that we have limited upside here uh, unless the Fed comes in. But the the indicators accurately from vantage point, you can see that we were unable to break down below the T-cross long, we're unable to break down below the 40 level on the predicted RSI, which ultimately led to a rebound and moving back up, even though uh, it could be disputed whether that was a hawkish or dovish Fed, but I would still lean towards the hawkish side personally, uh, because again, I don't see that that labor report uh, it was the best, uh, some of the inflation's coming down, but still not enough. Uh, but again, uh, we'll watch these levels very, very closely. Now, as that seasonality in oil continues to support oil, it also ind indirectly supports the Canadian dollar. With that surprise rate hike coming from the Bank of Canada, which again, in my respectful opinion only, was a huge mistake. Uh, the, the Canadian unemployment numbers came out uh, after they hiked and they were terrible. So again, uh, this is the problem with a lot of these central banks using lagging indicators to make these hikes. But for now, we, we've extended a little too far away from the vantage point predicted moving average. This is not Fibonacci based. It's a predicted moving average based on the correlation to 31 other markets actually. So 133.89, that's, uh, that's a significant line in the sand. We are bearish now on the month and the year. Uh, the monthly in the monthly at 135.74. The weekly opening, even last week, 133.41. But again, that monthly is very important. And our T cross long, that's our immediate area. But we also have the long predicted, this uh, shorter term predicted moving average, that we also use it as a pivot point uh, as on a weekly basis. So 132.95. Uh, I can I can say to a degree of about 80 percent that we will at least hit that level in the in the in the next several days by Wednesday. So maybe a counter trend long there. We do have our MA diff cross has taken place, but we're at nearing the end of that seasonality in oil, and that should also hurt the the Canadian dollar. And I think the media will start talking more about whether the Bank of Canada should have actually hiked last week or not the week before because highly questionable why they did that uh, because again i don't think they're using uh current data to support that but again uh could be wrong we shall see but for now watch those two re retracement points now the aussie has had a good run up uh now this is an interesting one going into next week so where i can where i can give you guys a little bit of help here is that the yearly opening price we've 68.17 this is a critical level that is now going to intersect with the vantage point long predicted at 6804 so all of our support is sitting right there so again this is an outlook not a recap of something that already happened we're talking about next week's trading and key support and resistance levels to watch for and how the market responds to them so this is a very big level if the stocks start to turn lower mainly the s p 500 the nasdaq etc if they turn lower and we've topped out on them then the aussie will not hold this level the direct positive correlation between stocks and the aussie the cad the cad and the new zealand is very very high so watch this level very cautiously a uh, long while above that level and if we're not holding above this particular level then shorts will work very very quickly i think either way again the long predicted 6804 we come down to this level Either way, like what I just showed you with U.S. Canada, New Zealand will fall into the same boat. Uh, it's going to make a push to the upside and what we want to look for. But you can see the difference between the Aussie and the New Zealand 
And I was asked this question last week. This is your culprit here that also dictates whether you want to buy the Aussie US or New Zealand US. Aussie New Zealand, this is where Aussie is getting a lot of its strength for, where it's beating up against its counterpart. So in order for people to buy Australia, New Zealand, they have to buy Aussie US while at the same time selling New Zealand US. So you can see this pair helps us, us determine which pair to go after. Now, Aussie New Zealand is getting very, very toppy up here and there's not a lot of buyers. So if this starts moving lower, you could see the scenario between Aussie US and New Zealand US reverse. And you could see them start to sell Aussie US and buy New Zealand US. So watch for that. But indisputably, the difference between these two currencies, the Aussie is the stronger. Now, if they if the dollar continues to fall against most currencies, then this would be this pair would be a place of value to sell dollars by buying it against the Kiwi. Now, when I look at this right now, the indicators from Vantage Point are cautiously warning of yet another reversal back to the downside on this pair so be very very cautious as we go into a holiday short week so with that said this is the vantage point ai market outlook for the week of june the 19th 2000